Hello everybody, this is Kevin from Klotz Productions, and this is game two between Charles playing Tezzeret Control and Ryan playing Callblade. Ryan was on the play and started off with a Celestial Colonnade, and then Charles laid down a Dark Slick Shores and used it to cast a Preordain. He put one card on the top, one on the bottom, and then drew his card. Ryan laid down a Plains and put a Basilisk Caller into play. He then cast a Preordain of his own and put one card on the top and one on the bottom also. Then Charles put a Creeping Tar Pit into play and cast a Duress. He chose to make Ryan discard his Jace the Mind Sculptor. For Ryan's next turn, he cast a Squadron Hawk along with the Silvok Life Staff and then searched for two more Squadron Hawks. Charles laid down another Tar Pit and then passed the turn. Ryan equipped his Life Staff to his Hawk and then laid down an Arid Mesa. He then attacked with the Hawk for two, taking Charles down to 18. Post combat, he put a second Hawk into play. Charles put a Tumble Magnet into play and then passed it back to Ryan. Ryan then laid down a Scalding Tarn, and then pre-combat Charles used his Tumble Magnet to tap down the Squadron Hawk with the Life Staff on it, so Ryan attacked with the other Hawk for one damage. Then post-combat, Ryan resolved a Stone Forged Mystic and used it to search for a Sword of Body and Mind. While he was at it, he sacrificed his Scalding Tarn going down to 19 to search for a Mountain. He then equipped his Life Staff to his Mystic and passed the turn. Charles put a Tectonic Edge into play. He then resolved a Tezzeret Agent of Bolus and used him to look at the top five cards of his library. He then revealed an Etched Champion. Ryan started off his next turn with a Preordain and sent both cards to the bottom. He then sacrificed his Arid Mesa going down to 18 and searched for a Plains. He then resolved a Sword of Body and Mind and equipped it to one of his Squadron Hawks. Then during pre-combat, Charles used his Tumble Magnet to tap down the equipped Hawk. So Ryan sent the other two Hawks at Charles' Tezzeret for three damage, taking it down to one loyalty. For Charles' next turn, he started off by laying down a Drowned Catacomb. He then used Tezzeret to find another Tumble Magnet and then put the Magnet into play. He then resolved his Etched Champion. Ryan then laid down a Glacial Fortress and animated his Celestial Colonnade. Pre-combat, Charles used his two Tumble Magnets to tap down the two Hawks that had the equipment on them. Then Ryan sent the Colonnade at Tezzeret to kill it and sent his last Hawk at Charles to do one damage to him, taking him to 16. Finally, he finished his turn by laying down another Squadron Hawk. Charles then resolved a second Tezzeret and used him to find an Everflowing Chalice. Ryan animated his Colonnade again and then pre-combat, Charles tapped it down with the Tumble Magnet. Ryan then attacked Charles with his hawk with the sword equipped to it and then sent his other two hawks at the Tezzeret. This took the Tezzeret down to one loyalty. And then Charles took three damage going down to 13, milled 10 cards off the top of his library, and Ryan got a 2-2. Two -two. Charles then used his Tezzeret to find a Steel Hell Kite and put it into play. For Ryan's next turn, he moved his Life Staff over to one of his Hawks and then equipped his Basilisk Collar to another Hawk. He then laid down a Tectonic Edge. During pre-combat, Charles used his Tumble Magnet to tap down the Hawk with the Life Staff on it. And then Ryan sent his team at the Tezzeret. Charles chose to block the Hawk with the Sword with his Steel Hell Kite to kill it. Then he blocked the Stone Forge Mystic with his Etched Champion, which also killed it. Then the remaining attackers were able to kill the Tezzeret. Ryan then gained one life from the Basilisk Caller going up to 19. Then post-combat, Ryan tried to wipe the board with the Day of Judgment, however Charles stopped it with a Mana Leak. Charles then attacked back with his Etched Champion and his Steel Hell Kite for 7 damage, taking Ryan down to 12. He activated the Hell Kite's ability to destroy all the permanents with 2 mana costs, killing the 2 Hawks. Charles also pumped up the Hellkite twice for two more damage, which in the end brought Ryan down to ten. He then used his Tectonic Edge to destroy Ryan's Celestial Colonnade before passing the turn. For Ryan's next turn, he equipped his sword along with his Life Staff to his Wolf and then attacked for five damage, taking Charles down to eight. Charles also had to mill ten more cards off the top of his library, and Ryan got another Wolf token. However, it didn't matter because post-combat, Ryan cast another Day of Judgment to wipe the board and gained himself 3 life going up to 13. For Charles's next turn, he resolved a Worm Coil Engine. However, Ryan drew a Journey to Nowhere off the top of his library to get rid of it. Before it resolved though, Charles did use a Mana Leak to make Ryan tap 3 of his lands. So Charles then laid down an Etched Champion on his turn and animated his Creeping Tar Pit. He went to attack with the Tar Pit, however Ryan killed it with his Tectonic Edge. Then post-combat, Charles resolved a Dark Steel Axe before passing the turn. 
Ryan then drew an Emeria Angel off the top of his library and played it, and then used a Glacial Fortress to get himself a bird token. He equipped his life staff to the angel and his sword to the token. Charles then put another creeping tar pit into play and animated his first one. He then equipped his dark steel axe to it and attacked for five, taking Ryan down to eight. Then for Ryan's next turn, he attacked with his two flyers for seven damage, taking Charles down to one life. Then he finished him off with the lightning bolt that he drew off the top of his library. Uh, that, that was ridiculous. <laughs>